Good morning, and welcome here. It is good to see so many people here. As we welcome the spring this morning and、uh, the sounds of melting snow and melting ice, I welcome you to this place and this time. Whether you are here for the first time, welcome. Whether you are here for the tenth time, whether you haven't been here in a while, or whether you have been here every Sunday, welcome. All are welcome to this time and this worship service. Don't believe there are any announcements to highlight、uh, that are too pressing, but there is a nice announcement about MCC Thrift Store's 50th that I invite you to check out. And、uh, there's been articles on CBC and Pemina Valley Online, and anywhere you see news articles about the MCC Thrift Store turning 50. So that is great to see, and welcome you to check out some of those as you have time. Let us turn now to worship in song and sing. Here I am to worship. Of Psalm 63 state, O God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call upon your name. Today, we gather to seek the ways of God, whose ways, God's ways, are not our ways. God's thoughts are beyond our thoughts. Today, we accept God's invitation to the feast. Where there is water in the desert, and delightful food to share. As we worship, we receive the abundant gifts of God, without money, and without price. So let us praise our God with singing and with joy. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we come to you in worship. We come to you in our joys and in our sorrows. We come to you in our certainties and also with questions, and yet we still come to you. May we always find ways to come to you, to turn to you, and to trust in you. Meet us here in this place. 
during this time. Meet us in our praying and in our singing. Meet us so that we may grow a little closer to you, a little closer to one another, and a little more in your likeness this day and every day. Amen. You will have noticed these boxes on the table here that we've had for a few weeks. They're symbols of the ways that we seek after God's ways. And yet every time we think that we have God's ways figured out, and any time that we try to box them up and keep them stable, God shows us that there is so much more than the boxes that we can create. There is so much more to be revealed. So I'd ask you to join me in the responsive reading as it is printed. I will read the words for the one and invite you to read the words of the many. The words are on the screen as well. We use boxes to limit our understanding of God's ways. These boxes put unnecessary boundaries around God. Your ways, O oh God, are higher than our ways. Let us seek God's ways. Lord, move us away from feeling we must earn your love. Help us receive and give your grace to ourselves and others. Let us join in singing How Deep the Father's Love. Now please join me 
in the prayer of confession. Holy One, we seek you while you may be found. We call upon you while you are near. Have mercy on us, O God, for our thoughts are not your thoughts, and our ways are not your ways. Forgive us for acting as if we must earn your love. Open us to receiving your love as a gift. As we walk with Christ on this Lenten journey, let us see your way more clearly and follow your way more faithfully. And hear these words of assurance. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are those whose sins our God does not count against us. God's unfailing love surrounds those who trust in the Holy One. Let us rejoice and be glad. Excuse me, I forgot my Bible. I will now read the scripture passage taken from Luke 13. Oh. We're going to do the children's story first. I had made my notes one way and we discussed it a different way. So, as we prepare to welcome the children forward, we'll sing the song, Today, the Earth is, Today Earth is Singing, and then the children's story will come. So children, come on down. Just a minute. We're gonna we're gonna meet the puppy and the llama again. They're gonna be on the screen, and they're gonna share a message with us. And I'm gonna read to you a story that Jesus told. And Jesus said these words. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down! Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. So let's see what Lama and Puppy have to say about this story. Lucia, I am so excited. I have a really cool story to tell you. See this apple? Yes. This apple came from a tree in our yard. I am so happy. Penny, you get excited and happy very easily. Penny, it's just an apple. From a tree in our yard. Okay, okay. But Lucy, here's the story. A year ago, my farmer looked at that tree and it wasn't producing any fruit. And my farmer thought, 
What good is an apple tree that doesn't have any apples? Cut it down, burn it. What good is an apple tree that doesn't have apples? I say it hasn't earned the right to live. Well, that's what my farmer thought. But then she kind of felt sorry and sad for the tree. She decided to give it one more year to produce apples. And ta-da, apples. Hmm. Penny, did you get that story from the Bible? No, I told you it happened on our farm. Well, actually, there's a story in the Bible just like that, except it's about a fig tree. What happens in the Bible story? Fig tree doesn't produce figs for three years in a row. Owner tells the gardener to cut it down. Gardener begs him to give the tree one more year. Gardener says he will fertilize it and care for it. Just please give it one more year. And what happened? Don't know. End of story. What? Yep. But I want a happy ending. Don't look at me. Let me think about that. Hmm. You can't hum. Humming is my thing. Oh, come on, Lucia. Remember what we learned about generosity? Everything comes from God. Nothing is totally rightfully ours. That's why we share. We can both hum. That doesn't mean there's any less humming to go around. Oh, whatever. So what is the happy ending? The gardener cared more about the tree than the owner did because the gardener is the one who takes care of it. The owner might say, cut it down, but the gardener loved that tree and wanted to give it every possible chance. God is the gardener. So the story is about how God doesn't give up on us. Okay, I'll buy that. Buy what? What are you going to buy me? Treats? Penny, it's just an expression. It means I'll agree with you. Oh, sorry. Sometimes I'm kind of spacey, you know. Don't give up on me, Lucia. Like we don't earn God's love and God doesn't give up on us. Right, I'll buy that. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear God, we are so grateful that you don't give up on us and that you are always teaching us new things and leading us in your ways. Help us to receive your love and grace, something we cannot earn, but that you always share with us. Bless and keep us. Amen. And you can go back to your seats now. Today earth is singing with stars up above Our arms wide and welcome for God's gift of love We greet you dear children, we are glad you are I'll be reading from Isaiah 55, verses 1 to 9. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will walk, I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. 
See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteousness and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The words we just heard are God's invitation spoken through a prophet to Israelites living in exile. It's time to come home. But the problem is that the exile lasted 70 years, two, three generations. And that's long enough that you don't understand where home is or how to get there. Many Israelites have now lived their entire lives in Babylon. And so a prophet comes to say it's time to, to come home. But what's, what's home? When you live in a place long enough, you start to accept the ways of living, the culture, the assumptions, so much so that uh, they become like water to a fish, simply accepted as reality. And now Israelites have lived in Babylon for generations, many their whole lives. They've come to live by Babylon's expectations. They've entered the empire's rat race, accepted the, the terms, and lived by the competition, the coercion, the systems of an empire. And I'm sure that some indeed uh, made it and did all right for themselves. Found a name, found a place in Babylon. But is it satisfying? Is it the way of God? Because the prophet asks, why are you laboring for that which does not satisfy? Why are you spending your money for that which isn't bread? The Israelites, they are striving for Babylonian junk food, trying to fill up with cotton candy. We have lived in this world long enough that we also begin to live and to accept the ways of the world as the way things must be. And we start to play by the rules of the world and allow the world to dictate for us what it should be that really matters to us and what it should be that we 
strive after. And sometimes this means working, working hard uh, to earn more, to make a name, to get a reputation. Sometimes we might succeed, we might work hard enough, we might be lucky, and we live with some affluence or comfort and wealth, and yet still something doesn't satisfy. Sometimes we identify with a viewpoint, a flag, a political party, an ideology, and we, we find some belonging or find some community or some meaning or purpose, but in the end it doesn't satisfy, it can't answer our deeper hungers and what it is that we are truly thirsty for. Or sometimes it's filling our, our schedules with events and activities and making sure the kids are in all the programs and, and opportunities so that they don't fall behind the other kids. And our lives become busy and hectic and something is unsatisfying, we have to wonder, are we introducing ourselves, our families, our children to what really will nourish and satisfy our, our lives? We live in a world where we exchange things we live under contracts, rewards, and expectations. And so in order to get more, we need to give more. We need to work harder. We, uh, we work an hour, a week, a month, and we, we get a paycheck for the time that we work. We go to the store and we, there are prices on all the items. And if we have the money available and we give the correct amount, we can have what we need and, and what we want. We make an exchange. We give a favor. We receive a favor. We make an invitation. We receive an invitation. The world works on contracts, exchanges, rewards. And so the way to get ahead is to work more, to try more, to give more. And so we continue to bust our you-know-whats on that which does not satisfy. Some years ago, I was at the grocery store, and on this particular day, there was a woman in, in line in front of me at the grocery store. Now, this was south of the border in the United States when I was a student. And in the United States, they have a food stamps program, and food stamps work kind of like a, a food bank. It's assistance for people who need help, uh, who struggle to put food on the table. And you can go to agencies and, and receive a, a food stamps uh, account or card. And so I'm at the grocery store, and the woman in front of me is unloading a cart full of groceries, and the cashier is scanning them. Beep, beep, beep. Uh, and when all the groceries were scanned, the customer, she hands over a card. And the cashier scans the card. But then she hands the card back. It was a food stamps card. And the cashier says to the woman, I'm sorry, 
There's no more money in your account. And so all the groceries that she had put in her cart that had been scanned, she did not have what she needed to buy those groceries. And this is a story not only of how people can be unlucky and get left behind in a world of earning and contracts and exchanges. It can also serve for us as a parable of how we come to God. We come to God filling our shopping carts full of what we want and what we need, but when we get to the checkout, while we think we have what we need to pay for it, but we don't. We don't have what is required to pay for it because God doesn't work on contracts and exchanges and earnings. When Isaiah spoke God's living word to the exiles, he said, it's time to come home, it's time to step out of the empire, the world that you're living in, it's time to seek God. Seek God because God can be found. And God is merciful and God is ready to pardon you abundantly and to set you free. Isaiah offers a message of grace and he says, come, come, come to the waters. Come, have wine and milk. It doesn't matter if you're broke. It's here for you. It's God's feast for you. There is water to quench our thirst. There is milk for our strength. And there is wine for our joy. And it's all free. Cannot be earned. It's God's readiness to provide a feast for us whenever it is that we come to realize the ways that we've been living are not satisfying, that we've just been eating cotton candy. Jesus saw a world of grace. He saw grace everywhere. Uh, Jesus saw grace when the sun shone, and he saw the sun shining on the good and the evil. And Jesus saw grace when he saw the rain, and he saw the rain falling on the just and the unjust. Jesus saw grace when he watched the birds, and how they always find seeds and fruit to eat even though they don't plant fields and they don't harvest and they don't store up. Jesus saw grace when he saw a flower, a flower without a mind of its own, but a flower that gives beauty to the world. Jesus saw grace in a fig tree given one more year to bear fruit. Jesus saw, saw grace, saw sins forgiven, debts forgiven. In the world of Jesus, a man who can't walk stands up, carries his mat, sins forgiven, and walks on his way. In, in God's world, uh, workers that show up at the end of the day get paid the same amount as the workers who showed up at the crack of dawn and labored all day in the hot sun. 
And we've lived in the world long enough to know that doesn't make any sense. But in God's world, it makes sense because in God's world, we are not under contract. We're under grace. And whenever it is that we are ready to receive full satisfaction, God has already begun preparing the waters, the wine, the milk, the bread that will nourish us. God will call us home. And God will extend pardon and mercies and grace that we cannot earn. There is this old game show. It's called Supermarket Sweep. I remember watching as a kid. It was fun. There was, um, they had this grocery store set up as the stage of the show. They, they had aisles of, of meat and produce and cereal and canned goods, like a grocery store. And they had these different teams, uh, and each team had shopping carts, and they would play uh, various games. And uh, one of the games was simply in the time frame to fill up your shopping cart with as much as you possibly could. And the team with the, the most value in their cart was the winner. And so the bell would, uh, would ding, and the people, they would frantically start running through the aisles, pushing their shopping cart, grabbing things off the shelf, stuffing them in the shopping cart, and then they would find something really expensive. Uh, so they would take their arm and sweep it across the shelf into their shopping cart. And then when the time was up, they would go to the checkout. With a shopping cart full of goods that they didn't have to pay for. Imagine that this quirky show is actually a true reflection of the world, truer than we can imagine. That in a world where so often we live by contracts and exchanges and junk food, that God is real and alive and gracious. And there's nothing we can do to earn God's love. There's nothing we can do for God to love us more. Nothing we can do for God to love us less. It simply is. And it's all about grace. Amen. Please join us in response with all who are thirsty.
Please join me in prayer. Gracious and generous God, you have given us all that we have and all that we are. And yet sometimes we still act like we have to earn your love. You have blessed us beyond measure, and yet sometimes we try to measure the love that you have given us and the love that we are willing to share, comparing our blessings to others and our lives to theirs. Forgive us our misguided thoughts. Forgive us our misguided actions. Help us freely give as we have freely received and love as abundantly as we have been loved. May we give back to you from the richness of our inheritance. And may you bless our offerings and acts of service and multiply them so that all may sit in the shadow of your wings and share in the joy of your abundance. At this time, we pray for the peace of the world. There is so much violence and fighting that we cannot begin to understand. We can't even relate to the turmoil and fear and loss that so many are experiencing. God of mystery, bring peace to Ukraine. God of mystery, soften Putin's heart. God of mystery, help the people see a way through this that does not create more killing and death. God of mystery, end the war in Ukraine and end the violence in Ethiopia and Syria. Bring peace to Afghanistan and Sudan. End the wars in Yemen and Libya. God of peace, we pray for peace for our world. We pray for our community and our families and our friends. After so long in our own homes and own bubbles, in some ways we have lost touch with one another and the people of this place. Help us build up one another and build up our relationships. Help us get to know our neighbors and those who are new to us. And help us forgive each other's past anxieties and acts of insecurity and offer the same grace that you offer us. Help us reach out to our families and those near to us and build bridges of understanding. Help us love the way Jesus taught us to love. And we pray for those who are hurting, for those who are living with uncertainties and pain, for those who are grieving, and for those who are feeling like they're at the end of their rope. Be with us all, O God. Draw us into your love. Be with those who are sick and in the hospital, those who are undergoing treatments and those trying to recover. And we pray for those who are in our care homes, those who are once again limited from seeing family and friends and feeling the isolating effects of the time that we are in. Like a mother hen, O oh God, wrap your loving wings around all of us so that we may feel your presence. God of every generation, guide us in our actions as we engage with one another and with the world you have created. Help us embrace the grace that you offer us and extend that grace to the individuals and to all of your creation. Amen. Now I invite you to please stand for the benediction and the final song, Same Power. From this time and this place into whatever awaits you, may you let go of any feelings of unworthiness or shame and accept God's abundant grace. May you let go of any need to earn God's love and simply accept it. As you go, 
know that our God remains with you on your way. Amen. See you.